Side in the white, the Hokies in the orange on a beautiful night for some soccer in Blacksburg. And there is Canuo lofting the ball to midfield. Rowan coming up for Cardona. So the Hokies last time Tech was home had a pretty nice win against High Point. Team that did make it to the NCAA tournament last year and now another crucial non-conference game with some space developing. Uimana got to watch out for him. The freshman has had some absolute banger goals in the last few games in Blacksburg. He's got great service into the box as well. And you saw the early switch of play from Vesterholm to swing it over to him. That's the type of possession the Hokies want. Start to move it side to side and try and find that opening. Cardona retreating back on the solid defense there from Kroko. What I like about this formation for Virginia Tech, when you get into the attack, it looks like three center backs. The wing backs get so wide, and they keep that width for you. And even though there's been some rotation there, all of them in that position have done a really good job of it, especially in the past four or five games. Raybo's tangled up there for William & Mary. Well, time for everybody's favorite part of a Virginia Tech soccer game. It's time for the Browns breakdowns. Josh, what do you got? Well, for William and Mary, you've got to be composed on the final ball. That's something that head coach Chris Norris told us. He said, you know, a few of those connecting passes in the final third just haven't come off, and then you've got to drop deep defensively. There's some alliteration for you, and they've got to do it quickly for Virginia Tech. They want to grab an early goal, and the menacing mentality is a must tonight. Big matchup between Mike Brizendine and his friend Chris Norris of William & Mary. Two really big figures in the Commonwealth of Virginia collegiate soccer for the past couple of decades now. Both Virginia born and bred. Chris Norris coaching at his alma mater of William & Mary. Mike Brizendine went to JMU and actually knew Chris Norris growing up through oh, Little League soccer. <laughs> it's really cool to hear these coaches talk about each other I mean these guys respect the heck out of each other uh, sounded like coach Briz calls coach Norris from time to time and picks his brain about tactics and you know how to set up for games and just anything else soccer wise they're really good friends but they both want to win this game exactly. both, both of them told us that they said <laughs> listen I like this guy we're out here to win the game though when you get in between the lines you're coaching to win uh, midfield for Krakow Also Longo, a slide back for Rutenberg. Rutenberg going through the defense. And a good move there for Hensley of Virginia Tech. Here comes Vester home now. So a big week for the Hokies. Trying to get back on the winning track before welcoming in a top 10 team here in the Blacksburg with Notre Dame. As Tech already does have a top 10 victory on the year on the road against Louisville, a program that Virginia Tech has certainly had its number as the Louisville Cardinals. It's a tough place to play in Louisville. They've got a great facility, great stadium, and the fans this year, obviously, with how successful the team, team has been, have been out there in force. There's not a lot of teams that can say they play that well away from home against such a quality opponent. Headed forward and then rolling back to the Back line for William and Mary. Here's Cole Knapp. Yeah, it looks like that center back pairing is going to be Knapp and Joe Core. Those two senior defenders will hold things down. They've been constant throughout the lineup this season. A lot of starts for both of those players and. Coach Norris was really high on Joe Core. He said, this is a guy that he is super tough and going to be steadfast back there. Well, speaking of Coach Norris, looking on from the sideline in his 20th season as the William & Mary head coach. He's been there a lot longer than that as far as being a player than an assistant coach. Been in Williamsburg quite a while. 
quite a while and quite a while to build that pipeline of recruits. They get a ton of players from Virginia, uh, really tapping into kind of the, the homegrown player, but then a good job of developing some international players and getting them in. A lot of graduates, uh, people that are, you know, going for their fifth, sixth year sometimes playing with this team gives you a lot of experience, and then they pepper it in with talented freshmen. Yeah, speaking of players on in the international sphere, Bazalongo with a good pass into the attacking third, the young man from Spain, and Virginia Tech able to clear the ball out close to the sideline, throw in Tribe. When the Tribe get into attack, it, it really looks more like that 4-3-3 where you've got the two center mids who are going to get a little more tacking. It'll be up to Augie Cooper to shield that back line in case there's any quick transitions from Virginia Tech. Rutenberg creating space. Still no finish there. Dangerous, and there is Timmy Adams making another start for Virginia Tech. Blast the ball out towards midfield, throw in William and Mary. How good has Timmy Adams been in some of these past couple of games? I mean, watching the game both against Clemson and Pitt, there were two 1v1 type opportunities that from talented forwards, Timmy Adams was able to snuff out and keep Virginia Tech in the game. He's going to have probably at least one or two really dangerous ones to deal with against this William & Mary team. Uh, speaking of danger, Uimano trying to threaten, but William & Mary with Augie Cooper's help can take a breath and get back on defense. Uimano, a player that Mike Brizendine talked about, he said he likes his confidence a lot and was certainly impressed with a freshman being able to have the wherewithal to take big shots from outside of the box. And those are the two goals that he scored this year. Long run, headed back to Adams. That seemed a bit more dangerous than the Hokies thought it was going to be. To continue that point, Noe Uimana was a player that Coach Briss said he's far exceeded expectations. A player that's super talented, and they didn't expect quite this start to the season from him. Now leading the Hokies in points with seven, with the two goals and three assists. I mean, that's another of those players. We talk about talented freshmen, and both of these coaches, other programs we've seen face off against Virginia Tech, they're able to restock with talented freshmen. Uimana, another example of it. I mean, trained with the Philadelphia Union first team at one point in his youth career. Uh, pretty outstanding freshman to, to slot in there, and then well-adjusted to the Division I game. So look at those freshmen able to make a big difference for Virginia Tech, Roche, Uimana, and Esco. We got for Esco, the freshman from Costa Rica, to come off of the bench here right as the first half likely closes. He came in with a goal against Davidson. And Coach Briz really emphasized with us this is still a really young team. Aside from the freshmen, they've got a lot of sophomore players who didn't see a ton of minutes last year who are stepping in and really getting their first taste of Division I soccer and ACC soccer. Still a long road to build. He loves the way the team looks now, but there's so much room for growth. And we saw that with the struggle of Virginia Tech last season where the Hokies had that uncharacteristic year missing the NCAA tournament. It was a bit of a struggle to find anybody for Virginia Tech that can finish. Now, you see a little bit of that improving this year with a few younger players like Uimana and like Roche that have been able to find the back of the net a few times. And we know that Virginia Tech will play a pleasing style of soccer, possess it, really knock it around, and they try and play with the ball at their feet. When you don't have someone on the end product, though, it can be so frustrating. You're doing all the work to lead up to it. You need someone to finish it off, and like you said, those talented underclassmen have been doing a great job, and there's been a step up, too, from players like Declan Quill, and I'd love to see Connor Pugh get on the score sheet more as well. Both of them scoring against High Point for the first time this season, and for Quill, that was the first goal of his college career against the Panthers. Say a William & Mary team that just had a shutout draw against UNC Wilmington, a nil-nil tie. 
in a conference matchup. They were outstanding defensively in that one. They really stifled UNCW from getting any promising attacks. I, I believe there was only one shot, maybe two, from UNCW. They, they, they've got the ability. You see a result like that, and you think, man, defensively, what a tough game. Declan Quill trying to split through a double team. Cardona finding a little bit of space. Roche turns around towards the six. Cardona now spreads out the field. This is where Uimana can be dangerous. Chips the ball in. First time we've called on Cole McNally's name of the Wake Forest transfer comes up with a big play. Excellent service. That's that's in a really tough area to deal with, right around the six-yard box. And then Cole McNally, strong hands. He called for that early and came out to get it. You know you might get a collision as a goalkeeper, and he came out and got it. And you mentioned the Wake Forest play from him in previous years. It kind of seemed like at Wake Forest, he was getting minutes early in his career and then slowly started diminishing the right time for him to make a move, and I'm sure... Chris Norris and the rest of the tribe really appreciate him transferring in. I mean, what a guy to have in between the pipes for you. Yeah, big-time recruit for Wake Forest a few years ago when Cole McNally was coming out of high school. And looking at it with talking about McNally's playing time, getting sparingly in there at Wake Forest, actually never played against Virginia Tech, so this is the first time he has seen the Hokies. Yeah, that's definitely a surprise. In, in 2020, he played in... 10 games, started nine, so it's kind of like a timeshare with the other goalie. And then, like we said, it just slowly, year after year, it's like, oh, man, I'm getting less time, getting less time. He made the move. Comes Uimana. Towards the touchline and the first corner kick. Take a look at McNally here, the goalkeeper who is tasked with a pretty big challenge right now. Made a ton of saves this year, and you mentioned he, he was highly recruited out of high school. He was top drawer soccer number 89 out of 100 when he came into college. Has U14, U16, U.S. Youth National appearances. I mean, the pedigree is there for this goalkeeper. Corner bent in, knocked away, and resetting with a corner on the other side. Once again, dangerous here for the Tribe. Another excellent service. That one was curling in driven hard and dropped in the exact right spot see if they can turn it up here again again Uimana I mean what can you say about his service this year oh, Uimana making it difficult for opposing defenses as this ball goes right into the surface of the sun <laughs> eyeing ahead over the crossbar and it will be a goal kick I'm not sure that anybody knew where that ball was going <laughs> right after the service. I don't think Sergio Sfenerides knew where he was serving that into. He could, <laughs> he had his hand up, the assistant referee couldn't see what was going on in there. And that makes it difficult. If that cross comes in from the other side for corners or set pieces, goalie's gonna be staring right into the sun. So that is, you know, sometimes you forget about it if you're looking at the stadium on, on screen here. It doesn't look bad from here, but you get field level. That sun's coming down. That's going to be tough for McNally to deal with and potentially Adams as well if there's any corners or crosses that get swung in. Yeah, it should be an issue potentially for about the next 25 minutes. Now, I don't have my Farmer's, Al Farmer's Almanac on me, <laughs> so I don't know what time the sun is supposed to set today. Oh, 6.52, I just got word from the control room. So we'll take a look at that. That is a long time to deal with the sun. I am a little disappointed you didn't bring the farmer's almanac, <laughs> but we'll let it slide. I, yeah, I didn't buy it at Food Lion on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like we're looking into one of Tatooine's two sons here. <laughs> Bo both of them. Got to put, put John Williams behind us. Oh, look at this. Man, that yep. just tells the story, folks. There you go. Great job from the camera crew and the production crew to show you what fans are seeing, what we're seeing up in the booth, and then, oh, man, as a field player, this type of cross, this is the dangerous area where Timmy Adams is looking into the sun. 
Close to the six, Adams unable to make the save and the ball leaks through. It's a goal for Aiden Morrison. Second goal of his college career and William and Mary on top early. I'm not even sure the sun made a difference on that one. Ball dropped down there, nobody cleared it away. Adams, what a fantastic initial save here. Gets to it and then he and Howard collide and Morrison is there to sweep up the mess. That's what you need to do, just put some pressure on it. That's a great service in. You gotta give credit to that free kick. So Morrison had his first collegiate goal and a loss against New Hampshire. William and Mary hoping that could be a huge difference against an ACC foe on the road here today. Virginia Tech down 1-0. Well, this is the exact type of start that Coach Brizendine warned us that he did not want. Early goals against them. Now William and Mary can drop back defensively even more quickly. They were more confident after that goal. And Virginia Tech, they're gonna have to do really good work to open things up from here. That's, uh, that's well done by William and Mary, taking advantage of the set piece. It was interesting talking with Briz about how important he felt this game was. He, <laughs> he said, I don't want to put too much pressure on the guys, so I've been trying to find the balance of telling them this is extremely important and like, hey, just prepare like usual for the game. He didn't want to freak them out, but you know, the early one, the early mistake, th this is the type of game you look back on and you're like, hey, if we we're able to get to 500, that helps with our overall record and then potentially that tournament placing at the end of the year. And this is a Virginia Tech team, schedule-wise, that certainly doesn't make getting to the NCAA tournament easy for itself. Right. You know, starting off the year against the UCLA team and then a few of those other non-conference losses to teams like Duquesne. I mean, the Hokies were in a tough spot to begin the year. And then add on to that all of these teams that you put on your own schedule, you have to face the ACC. So look at that, the third toughest schedule. And absolutely staggering that the other ACC teams have that highly <laughs> regarded of a ranking themselves as far as the toughest schedules go. That, that sort of thing helps, though. For Virginia Tech, it means you're getting great experience out of conference, and you're building that resume for the tournament. I think that game against Louisville, that's a win, will boost their status a lot in the eyes of the selection committee. Um, and then some of those other out-of-conference games where they get results including one like this. If you can get a result here and William and Mary looks good the rest of the way, all of them are important. There's not one that you look down and say, hey, take this one off, you know? Yeah, and just to clarify there, that graphic signified the rankings in nationally yes. how challenging those schedules were. So Virginia Tech has the third hardest schedule in the country. Even Mary with some early confidence here. Coming up with a free kick. Now it's important for a younger team. How do you bounce back from that? You can't allow another one to go in, and you need to attack well and make the most of your final ball if you get on the other end for the Hokies. Krakow trying to win the ball back. Instead, it's the Hokies and Howard. Vesterholm spreading out the ball to Uimana. Declan Quill lost it. And service back to McNally. It's tough pressure from William and Mary. They really pressed high. Sometimes ex I expect them to drop back a little deeper initially when they've lost that ball. They kept everybody up, put some pressure on the back line. Vesterholm with a great switch, but Uimana didn't really have much to look at other than Declan Quill up the field. Up for Hensley.
Yeah, look again how high William and Mary are pressing there on the outside backs. Occasionally when they can get compact and keep things on one side of the field, they're keeping their wing players way up. The pressure still coming for the Tribe. Mazzalongo and the Croco now for the young team from William and Mary. Intensity's been there for William and Mary here in these first 20 minutes. Aiden Morrison making that go ahead goal for William and Mary. If you're just now joining us moments ago. I really like the way they've been pressing the ball in advanced positions. Was a long go. Drilling the ball right at Howard now. And you know, I didn't expect William and Mary to quite press that high after losing the ball in some of these attacking areas, but there is a chance there for Virginia Tech. They've shown they can get some quick breaks against teams like Pitt and Clemson. Uh, William and Mary's got to be a little care careful there. I like the pressure, but sometimes it can lead to some dangerous opportunities for the Hokies. And McNally well outside of the box there. Possession still controlled, though, by the Tribe. There is Morrison. Base developing for a second for Tech. Roche tackled, no call. It's deemed clean by Augie Cooper. Fantastic slide tackle from Cooper there. Perfectly timed. It was a little behind the player when he made the slide. Got all ball on that one, though. Cooper, a native of Williamsburg, Virginia, went to Jamestown High School, played for the Eagles. Service in for Quill, just over the head. Yeah, look how compact this William and Mary team is. You can see all of their wing players in the one camera shot. They just keep that field really constricted and try and keep it on one half of the field. It'll be tough for Virginia Tech to try to find some sort of break in this defense here. And where Virginia Tech is going to be effective is if they can switch the ball to one of their wing backs, whether that's Cardona or Uimana. If they can get it to one of their center mids like Kenua, Vesterholm, or Hensley, and then one of those players can play it quick to the other wing, that's a chance where you can break down that compactness and, and drive at a defense that's a little unstructured. But that's a, a taller task than me just talking about it. <laughs> As it often is. <laughs> we're in the, <laughs> if only they're they could down just there, we're do up it. here. Yeah. <laughs> and that's uh, it's a well drilled William and Mary team, and you can tell Coach Norris and his staff did a great job of scouting this Hokies team. And th there's some triggers in play when they lose the ball to make sure that they keep their wingers high, they keep their forward high, and they put some pressure on the outside backs so that the Hokies can't get through that initial line of pressure and try and possess. Declan Quill finds Roche. Could be a chance for Tech, and instead it rolls out for another corner. Oh, Roche and Vesterholm a bit frustrated there. They knew they were just inches away from maybe finding a solid shot on goal. Get another look at this one, Josh. Roche with the exact right idea on the quick break, trying to get it to Vesterholm, and that's going to be a run. Sometimes it isn't rewarded, but Vesterholm, excellent work rate to continue that run on and potentially have a wide open 1v1 with the goalie. Oh, brand new shift of Hokies coming in. Misei Yoshizawa, watch out for him. Talented sophomore. Marcos Esco also on for Virginia Tech. Looking for a head. Oh, that was inches away. What a header from Theo Drennan. He climbed the ladder on that one 
and a ton of credit for the defense here to stay on their end line and make sure they cleared it away. All right, Theo Drennan, look at Morrison wow. once again. <laughs> the hero in this game so far for William & Mary. He already has a goal and pretty much a save there. That's fantastic discipline. Sometimes as a defender, you can get a little loose with your positioning after you see someone go up and win the header. Stayed on the end line, stayed next to the post, and cleared it away. Wow. Eight. Couldn't ask for more from Theo Drennan, though. Right, right. And, and actually, on that one, Morrison drifted a little bit from the post. He was basically playing as the second goalie there. What a play there. Well, Fenneritis was a bit frustrated that that ball was not called another corner, so instead it is a throw-in. Lobs it towards the six, looking for Andy Sullins. Kept on the ground. Throw in Cardona. Another thing I like about this Virginia Tech team is the depth. They just bring on four players who are going to give you a great energy le level off the bench in attacking positions. See if they can grab a goal back. Grant Howard. Sprinting into the defense there. Solid collision. Another throw in for the Hokies. Thunder 20 minutes left to go in this first half. Here is Yoshizawa. The shove, and here comes a big free kick. Yeah, it looked like maybe a raised arm into the back of the head there, and Sullins, they call him Smiley, but he is certainly not smiling after that challenge. So Sullins down, and now right back up. That looked to be a bit rough. Uh, looked like on the connection there for William & Mary, that's Joe Core. So it happened just outside of the box, so it will be a free kick and not a penalty kick. And referee might be going to check something here on the sideline himself. So the sophomore from Athens, Tennessee went down to the grass. Looked like Joe Core shoved him down. And he's certainly looking at a video monitor there so I think he's giving it a review potential so they are able to review here if he is inside or outside of the box so this is a really crucial review so he says he was outside So Chris Norris trying to figure out if has to make any changes here. And it's a free kick on the outside. This is a great position for a free kick either way. Fenneritas has a wicked left foot. This is one that I really like from this position when someone bounces it right in front of the goalie, put it on frame so it forces him to do something. If you get enough traffic from guys crashing in, you never know what can happen with it. What do you think Fenneritas is just going to take a shot on goal here? I think definitely put it on frame near that front post area. If I were him, I would shoot it. <laughs> that maybe says more about me than him, though. Well, we'll see here, dangerous free kick coming up for Virginia Tech. Looking for the equalizer off of the left foot. He does try on frame. McNally popped the ball up, gasped for a second, and then maintained his composure. And that's exactly why I like taking a shot in that position. If the goalie drops it, there were players right there, thankfully, for William and Mary McNally got right back on it, but man, that's a scary one to watch your goalie bobble. Off of the chest of Sullins. That is called for William and Mary. Lucas called us into the game and trying to make a difference. First. Goal kick, it looked as if it was going to be a corner first. Instead, it is a goal kick for Timmy Adams. 
Haven't seen a ton of service up to Caldas yet. And how about Grant Howard with the silky smooth footwork there on the back line? That's something, again, we talk about Virginia Tech in possession. It really starts with those center backs who are calm and collected with the ball at all times. That was Marcos Esco. There is Cole Knapp playing with a face mask. And when we asked Coach Norris about who really stands out on his team, despite maybe not standing out so much on the score sheet, he did not hesitate to mention Cole Knapp. <laughs> I mean, when you've got the face mask on and have that type of an injury, you know, it's an injury to the orbital bone, I believe, as we were talking with Coach Chris Norris. And he was injured and wanted to come back and play. He wanted to be on in the same game, a, a really nasty injury. The very next game, he was back with the face mask, ready to go. Talk about toughness from one of your defenders. That's uh, that's what you ask for as a head coach. I go with a translucent mask. I would have thought, you know, maybe bringing out the, the Rip Hamilton <laughs> or remember when LeBron wore it that time. I'm trying to think of some other guys, too, yeah. who had the translucent mask, right? LeBron famously. LeBron. I think they remember that he, he wore the black one and they said, ah, actually, no, <laughs> don't do this anymore. Yeah, Richard Hamilton. I feel like he had that on for 20 years. Yeah. back for Theo Drennan. Balak now coming off of the bench. And as we learned, pretty famous on TikTok apparently. Yes. <laughs> Just learned about it. Over 100,000 followers. It's a little higher than mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sun continues to set in Blacksburg and setting on the first half as well. Under 16 minutes to go. Foul called, free kick, Virginia Tech. Good aggressiveness from William and Mary, though. Daniel Salem and Merlin Luke Mini pressuring on the back line, and that's the same thing that the wingers who started the game for William and Mary gave you as well. Wimana. On defense so strong for William and Mary. Comes Andy Sullins. Marcos Esco trying there to threaten, but instead Joe Core sends the ball to the sideline for a Hokies throw in. Esco had a goal against Davidson, came off of the bench to do so, adds a speedy spark for Tech. Esco, one of these players that I would really like for Virginia Tech to see him start to get some more goals. He's still very young in his career with the Hokies. The talent is definitely there. Sometimes it's just the right moment, the confidence, and you get one or two and you start feeling really good about the rest of the season. Drennan. Another long ball up for Esco. McNally there for the Tribe. Not a bad idea to go direct towards Esco. He's a big body up there to try and win the header. And that's something I think Virginia Tech has done a better job of this year compared to last. Sending that ball up and being a little more direct. They were getting the habit too much last year of continuing to pass the ball around, not really looking for an early option. As we talk about possession, though, Timmy Adams taking a little risk back there. 
The ball by Esco. Wimana lost the ball. Defense still strong. That was Ray Bush for William and Mary. Howard splitting defenders. Howard's a guy that can take the ball all the way across midfield. Instead passes it up. Sullen's raising his hand. He wants this ball. Esco trying to stop on the ball. Couldn't quite keep his feet there. That was a really dangerous attack for Virginia Tech. Essentially a three-on-three -three against that defense. One of the more promising looks that they've had. And it came from a Grant Howard run out of the back, splitting through so many defenders for William and Mary. I, I like Howard in defense, but man, it would be so enjoyable to watch him on the wing or in a more attacking position. He has an ability to beat anybody on the field. There's Uzawa. That's 12 minutes left here. That was Mayola Kinyua wearing the captain's armband with Wendleton out. Here's Uzawa won the ball. Oh, the left footer went wide. Definitely not what he was thinking there, but you see just for a moment a flash of that talent for Yoshizawa. Had a big goal against Clemson to tie it up. A rare miss hit from Yoshizawa in that position. You know exactly what he's going to do. You can't stop it, though. He's going to put it onto his left and try and curl it to the back post. That time, unfortunately, the foot didn't get around it, so it skied it closer to the corner flag. But Yoshizawa has that ability. That goal against Clemson, a, a volley that he brought down. I mean, what a fantastic finish for his only goal of the year. I have a feeling that guy will be getting a few more goals before it's all said and done this season. I'm for William and Mary. They have not possessed here in the last 15 minutes or so, seemingly, after the goal. They've had a hard time getting on the ball, but that defensive shape has been extremely disciplined. So targeting Uemana up on the wing. Free kick tack. Ballack did well there, holding off two William and Mary midfielders and winning the free kick. And, and you know, Ballack's a guy, too, who he's had some goals this year and assists. Uh, another midfielder that can step up and score from you. Well, Sullins, this double team there. Yoshizawa, space developing. Can you and now too much on the touch for Sullins? Almost perfectly weighted from Kinua. The the through ball was the right idea. Sullins was even with the back line, but had a lot of room to run. Salem looking for someone to pass to. Kinua showing the defensive side of his game there. We've already seen so much work rate from him early in this one. I think Yoshizawa wanted the ball back. Hokies maintain possession. Trucking forward. Sullins now chips forward. Well, Josh, Virginia Tech has had a few big chances here, and you can see that the passes are almost just right, but just not all the way there. The build-up play has been excellent. Good ideas all around. That one, Sullins took that touch on the ball after the great run through by Sergios. 
I think Sullins could have let that run through his legs to Balak instead of taking the touch, though. Balak making a great charging run in. You can see why he's got a couple goals this season. Another through ball. And another one. You're talking about the buildup. Looked good just right in that attacking third. The play came apart. Too long of the touch. It was Yoshizawa again getting the ball in midfield, able to turn and then play that through ball forward. And again, I mentioned it a few minutes ago, but Virginia Tech has done such a better job breaking early, playing direct when they need to. We've seen a couple examples of it when they're able to win the ball back in midfield. Just like that, Balak almost did so. And Bazalongo. William & Mary developed some sort of try here, some sort of attack. It's been Virginia Tech winning the ball back in the midfield for the past 20 minutes. But Aiden Morrison, the lone goal, and really has the biggest defensive play in this one as well off of the header from Theo Drennan. Ball was inches away from equalizing instead right into the foot of the freshman from Denver, North Carolina on a Virginia Tech set piece. Instead, it's 1-0. Yeah, you see Denver and you, you think, oh, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how big in comparison Denver, North Carolina is. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's not as bad as, you know, getting off the plane and then you're in Paris, Tennessee. It's <laughs> <laughs> also a Paris, Kentucky. Paris, right. I wonder which one is, is more close to the France, Paris. Well, I'm glad you asked because <laughs> Paris, Tennessee has an Eiffel Tower. Yes. I love okay, it. so. I don't think Paris, Kentucky Paris, does. Paris, Kentucky doesn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tennessee wins. <laughs> Chip forward. Oh, what a play. No foul called. Virginia Tech plays on. It was nearly 2 0 off of Ray Bush. Could have been his third goal of the year. Beautiful slide from Uimana somehow making the defensive play there. A left footer. A Ray Bush again. All kinds of space for William and Mary. Over the post. Got to take another look at that defensive play. Ray Bush, look at that ball in, Josh. What a slide there. That's a just a picture-perfect defensive play. Getting to it first, playing physical. Ray Bush is going to be a little disappointed. He thought he had timed that run in perfect. I think that ball coming in from Bazalongo as well, either, either him or Bronco on that service, one of the center midfielders. Really nice ball. And that was... A couple of possessions there for William and Mary where Virginia Tech's pushing everybody up near the end of the half and they had a chance to break. Dylan Middlebrook with a push of the ball out to the right. Two saves made by McNally and let's count sort of a pseudo save made by Aiden Morrison of William and Mary. Morrison, the lone goal in this one. Virginia Tech has only taken two shots. William & Mary only has one shot in this entire first half and leads 1-0. They've generated a lot of looks at goal, just not the shots, to your point, Virginia Tech. They've kind of been passing the ball around, crossing in, trying to play some dangerous through balls. Bronco. Oh, a crafty move there to create some space. Right, and Kinua and Yoshizawa talking with each other after that one because Bronco was in that space that usually Kinua's in. I think Yoshizawa had to cover for him. I, I don't think either one was mad. It's just like, hey, who should have been in that space there to cover that shot? Bronco had a chance to just dribble through and take a rip. Yeah, Bronco has never scored for William & Mary. Just a sophomore, plenty of college career left to do that, but... And a little bit of space for himself and tried to carve it out for a 2-0 lead. Yeah, that's a, that's a matter of time. He has a ton of talent, makes some of those bursting runs through, and the technical abilities there, he can set up his teammates. He will get many a goal for this Tribe team. The 
Lost it. Free kick. Just a little over three minutes left here in this first half. Yoshizawa with a little aggressiveness. That's something that Coach Briz told us. He likes to step up in the defensive side of the game for Yoshizawa. Another one of these players that he talked about having a lot of runway ahead of him. He's so talented already, but there's another ceiling to get to. And that defensive part of the game, a big piece of it, he's playing more as a box-to-box -box center midfielder than as a center attacking mid. He kind of played underneath the forwards last year. This year he's got to do a lot more defensive work than I'm sure he was used to. Now, stopping the clock here. Not sure what that break was for, but it's resumed nonetheless. Yoshizawa, look at the speed. Got the ball back. Wants a whistle. Could this be a card? And it will be. Clear pull of the jersey or arm there as Yoshizawa is breaking away. Dangerous counterattack for Virginia Tech as well. Yep, little pull there. Stopping a promising counterattack. And Joe Kaur picks up the yellow card for William and Mary. That's, we were just talking about Yoshizawa on the defensive side. That was all offensive ingenuity that we've come become used to here at Virginia Tech from Yoshi. So here's a big set piece for Virginia Tech. Benaritas looking for Sullins. Long touch for Howard. Collision, Yoshizawa won the ball back, craftily so. Balak now with a blast. Sliding tackle. Clock running down in the first half for a Virginia Tech shot here. Defense is really hunkered down for the Tribe. Before the end of the half, Virginia Tech is going to have to look for a switch of play to one of the outside backs and see if they can generate a cross into the box. Cardona. Passing the ball around, no shots as of yet. Yoshizawa, can you, uh, Esco tried to tie it up, just whiffed, but the flag came up. Virginia Tech looked like 2013 Barcelona there for 10 seconds. That was one-two play at the top of the box in traffic between almost all of your attacking players. What a beautiful run of play there. Esco, just a couple steps offside, awaiting that ball. How about that, though? Yoshizawa, Kinyua, Esco getting involved, and I thought it was going to be a cross into the box here to end the half. Instead, they went right down the middle with some tiki-taka, as they say. Now, for Kinyua, it looked like he had a, a solid chance to potentially take that himself. He potentially could have driven through. There were a couple defenders that were kind of close to him, but you've got a point. I mean, he had a chance to break, and Kinyua's mindset is usually, hey, I'm going to slide this over to someone. So I'm sure as he got in the area, he thought, let me see who else is open. But hey, now can you? Uh, he's feeling the goal scoring juices <laughs> after the goal against Pitt. That's going to be it for the first half. William and Mary, courtesy Aiden Morrison, up 1 0 on Virginia Tech. Early goal. It, the mentality's maybe like a half check mark there. They, I've seen some good things at times, but. 
Coach Brisbane was not happy. He wants even more out of this team and some more aggressiveness in the second half. I said at halftime that his team was lethargic. Trying to coax some of that lethargy out of this team. Moving forward here in the second half. I do appreciate the use of the word lethargic. I mean, what a good descriptor to describe a, a little slow start for your team. As we peer deeper into the thesaurus here, <laughs> Wayman Mary getting closer into the attacking third with an early chance. A back line, and as the ball skirts over the touch line, it will be a goal kick for Timmy Adams. Gabe Rutenberg, the freshman from Riverdale, New Jersey. Scored a couple of games ago against Drexel. That was a 2-2 draw. Remember, this is a William & Mary team that has played in so many one-goal games. And like Virginia Tech, in these last two games, just were unable to finish to get the result that they wanted. On a ball, Morrison trying to find a brace. Bounces into the grasp of Adams. Not a bad look at all. And if you're Coach Briz, you're probably feeling the exact same way you felt at the end of the first half. Things look a little slow for the Hokies to start. William and Mary, certainly the aggressors coming out and creating a good chance. Andy Sullins. Oh, a bit of some pushing and shoving there. We might have thought he had it. Instead, it's Cole Knapp. Here's a guy we haven't really talked about that much, and that's Lucas Caldas leading this team in scoring. Hasn't had many touches, so watch out for number nine for William & Mary. He's good from set pieces and crosses into the box as well. He's a big target to look at. Good at hold-up play. He hasn't really gotten the ball to feed or down to his chest at all so that he can start something for William & Mary. Well, called us, though, in those first six games, three goals, last five, just one. What a difference maker he can be here. William & Mary crowding the six-yard box. Away! Get blow. Hey. Away! I'm tangled up. He was looking for called us, and Andy Sullins was boxing him out of the six. Be a goal kick. Sullen's wearing him like a cape on that one. Called us just climbing his back to try and get to it. That's a good uh, defensive positioning from Sullen's. And that's something as a forward, it's like, man, I got to come back on this corner kick. You need those bigger physical players, though, to help you out on defense on those set pieces. And Sullen's doing that gritty work. Declan Quill into the game for the first time in a long time. Here he is now, Quill, towards the six. Uiman has got space. Towards net! Goals wide open potentially for the Hokies for just a moment. McNally able to recover. We get to see once again Uimano with the excellent service so often this year. And Sullins has been a willing runner into the box for this Hokies team. He gets the start the second half, so we see a little bit of a switch up in play from the Hokies with Sullins in the lineup, Yoshizawa as well. Two real good energy guys that are going to give you a lot of attacking options. So inches away from his head. So the idea was for Sullins. It actually looked like he potentially connected on that one, and McNally made the save with his forehead. Good punch away from McNally, whether that's with his head or his fist, it doesn't really matter. Good clearance, and that's better from the Hokies, though. Finally getting some good service in and a really sharp attacking run from Sullins. Well, who will throw this ball in? It's going to be Quill. Now the Virginia native stepping all the way back to the fence. Cardona, the give back to Quill. What a move by Quill. Carving out some space. 
Ball cleared away. It's a great run by Quill. Beat two defenders and then lost one. And fortunately for William and Mary, I think that's going to be in uh, the, the spot you don't want it. He absorbed all of that shot into the box, too. A bit of a tough scene right now for William & Mary, one of their better players down in Buzzalongo. I think he got the, the wind knocked out of him. I mean, that ball was driven hard as well. Well, a few deep breaths. He's back up. Oof. Almost literally a gut punch. Yep. Looks like he's walking okay, though, and he'll be back on quite shortly. We said Bazalongo is just an outstanding player for this team. He's had a couple of all CAA second teams in his career and a lot of assists and goals. Does have two goals on the season as well. The collision. Well, a decision to put Yoshizawa out there to start the second half. He did not start the game. He was one of those players in the first half that gave you an attacking drive, took some players on, and was able to do the right things with the ball, as we've so often seen throughout his young career here with Virginia Tech. So I, I really like the decision to start him in the second half. Yo, Drennan... The cleating slide. Calda stays up. It will be a throw in for William and Mary. That is such a good tackle. You can see it's kind of like the hooking slide tackle. He gets the outside foot around there and then pokes it away. Theo Drennan, so often unsung in that back line. He deserves all the plaudits for that slide tackle there. Throw in Hokies. Off the body of Quill. Sullins just couldn't poke it through the defense. Credit to William and Mary again. They get bodies behind the ball quickly. Augie Cooper has done an excellent job of staying disciplined, staying in front of his two center backs, and has so often been involved or directing the traffic for the midfielders in front of him. the job from Morrison too I mean the goal scorer now he's tracking back on defense he's looked good in almost every facet of the game tonight he's going to have a huge impact on this program throughout the rest of his career trying to manufacture some sort of chance for the Hokies maybe some space here Vesterholm Andy Sullins, what a move. And just like that, another chance evaporates for the Hokies. There's no really no threatening attacks for Virginia Tech here in the first eight minutes. In the second half. One goal so far from Aiden Morrison. Oh, no whistle. Yoshizawa getting physical. There's the whistle. And a free kick. I don't think the first one was a, was a foul. That second one was a slide in. But, man, I thought he timed it pretty well. Maybe he came up high over the ball. Morrison takes the brunt of that one. 
and the talented freshman goal scorer will go down. That all ball there. Yeah, I think he got the ball first on that one. Kept close to the six. Benaritas went to the ground. The oh, Hokies breathe for a second, but now back on a corner kick. Wow, dangerous, dangerous there from Fenneridis. He was on the ground and made kind of incidental contact with the attacker. That's one, if the referee's in a certain type of mood, he didn't get close to the ball. Could have been a PK shout there. Right now, the intensity in the second half has been really favoring the tribe. Loose back into the box now. Ball is yet to hit the ground. There it is. But going back to that intensity, we were talking about how Mike Brizendine thought his team was lethargic. And we haven't seen that much of an answer for Virginia Tech here very early in the second half, but still nothing. There needs to be a little flip of the switch from, I, I don't even think it's the attackers. I think Sullins has been making a good run in behind the defense. I think the midfielders need to get on the ball like this and take some players on, maybe get the center backs involved in the attack too. We've seen Fenneridis and Grant Howard make some runs. And he'd love the ball to get to Uimana with some space to run. Aiden Morrison, space developing now. Rutenberg carving through, off of the post. So close. Caldas now has to pass it back. Called us. Wow. And it will be a corner kick. I mean, what else can you say about the William and Mary attack here? Rutenberg, another one of these talented freshmen. Great dribble through the defense there, and he kept it low. I mean, Virginia Tech's another inch away from going down two goals. So talk about these underclassmen that have stepped up for William and Mary. Called us just a sophomore himself from Northern Virginia. Morrison's got two goals his second tonight. Rutenberg almost had his second <laughs> goal of the season and goal of his college career right there, inches away. Another drilled low pass. And Kanua lofts the ball out. See if Sullins can catch up. Sullins left his foot in there really late. Could have been a yellow card there. Just a, a late challenge. Wasn't going to get to it. That's Cole Knapp. Remember, already has a broken orbital bone in his face. Still managing to play and a tough foul there. Yeah, he'll be back up and running after that one. We know he's tough and absorbs a lot of physical punishment. Yeah, that one just might not feel great in the morning. I'm trying to jog it off. What could feel great for William and Mary is a big win to get back in the winning column against an ACC school. Plenty of time to try Ooh. to add on another goal here for the Tribe. Sullins crashing in. Yeah, Sullins with the knee into the spot that is best left undisclosed. And another one that might n knock the wind out of one of these William and Mary players. Lou and Mary not excited about that foul call, Rutenberg. And once again, we're just seeing it, it turned up, the intensity for William and Mary. The chances have been all from the Tribe so far. At least here in the second half. I've really liked the intensity from Rutenberg and, and of course, Morrison as well. They put in a good shift, just box to box, pressuring, getting in attacking areas. It has been... A great intensity from this tribe. And Virginia Tech is going to get a sub here eventually. I feel like he's been standing over there forever. forever. Maybe another chance to get a little spark into this Hokies team. Ethan Hackenberg waiting so patiently for Tech. Uimana. 
Wants to draw the foul. Goal kick. I'm perplexed that that's not a free kick in that position. Uimana beat the defense with a good long touch and looked to me like he was clipped. I, I, I'm puzzled. Didn't stay up to argue it for long. To me, it looked like a clear late challenge. The leg of the defender went into Uimana's leg as he went by and Virginia Tech unlucky not to get a free kick in that situation. So here comes Ethan Hackenberg, Vesterholm getting a break. Hackenberg, another underclassman for Tech. Flag came up. You know, watching Hackenberg on film when he's gotten to come on the field, he is a really creative midfielder. So this is a move to get someone who can dribble at the defense along with Yoshizawa, uh, maybe play a direct through ball into one of your forwards. I've always liked the way Hackenberg has approached the game. I was looking for Hackenberg there. Uimana's pass rolls outside of the main play here. 1 0. Still remains for Virginia Tech and the Tribe. Pass back to Adams. This could be dangerous here. That was not cleared out enough. Could be headed in. No turn. And Virginia Tech can count themselves lucky there. Lucky to get away with that opportunity going against them. That was one that Adams and his defense, they're so comfortable on the ball. Sometimes he can get a little too comfortable. Great pressure there. It was Evan Raybush. We talk about talented freshmen. He's the one who put the pressure on Fenneritas and made him cough it up. And again, William and Mary, the intensity has been there from the jump in this second half. Well, Sullen's tangled up. Could be favorable for Quill. Sullen's fighting up there again on those direct long balls. It'll be interesting here as we get along if more subs come on for the forwards. You'll probably have Roche and Esco up there together. Two really big physical presences. There's Quill right at McNally. Yeah, right now, Sullen's the only option in the box there, really, that could get to that header. You've got Yoshizawa and a Hackenberg behind him that are going to be playing center mid. So those two guys really not going to give you the attacking threat from headers. Uh, they'll give you a lot of good technique and one-two passing in there to open something up on the ground. But I think if Virginia Tech's going to go direct and serve crosses in, Esco and Roche are going to come off the bench and give you that. Now Hackenberg going to chip it back to Fenneritas. Hokies with a few subs ready to check in. And now we'll have to wait. Ray Bush. And there is a foul. Free kick coming. Say what you will about Ray Bush on the foul, but the pressure, I mean, he is not letting the defense breathe when he gets up there, and that's a philosophy the rest of the wingers and the attacking midfielders have gotten for William and Mary. Do not make things easy in possession for Virginia Tech, and the Tribe have executed on that in this second half. Well, Connor Pugh ready to run in for Virginia Tech. The upperclassman, a goal scorer potentially for Virginia Tech is Andy Sullins. Had a solid couple of efforts there. Nick Laffey also coming in. A bit of a rare name for Virginia Tech. Seen some more minutes here in recent games and uh, might be a move to get another one of those bigger attacking players, someone who can attack the headers into the game, and Connor Pugh will make 
daring runs into the box as well. He really gets aggressive trying to get in there, get on the end of something. Hokies want a corner and they get it. Now you've got Laffey and Pew in the box. So there is Laffey, the freshman from Germantown, Maryland. Uimana will be the one to take it. Could Trent. this be the chance for Virginia Tech to equalize here? Trennan's up there as well. He's really good on headed attempts. Going on the end of it. And another Hokies throw in. And more subs for Virginia Tech. Carter Hensley, who started the game, comes in for Cardona. That's a really interesting switch. They're going to move Uimana to the right-hand side, probably for more service of the ball. And Hensley comes out to the left as Cardona comes off. So switching the outside backs up a little bit. You can expect to see Uimana bombing down that right-hand side and serving balls into the box. Another corner. Well, Carter Hensley is a player that Mike Brizendine has talked about that can do just about everything for Virginia Tech. Uimana, potentially a player to do the same as well. Seen Hensley play outside back, center mid, outside mid, really wherever you need him. Service has to be good. It came for William and Mary from a, from a service. Can it come from the set piece for the Hokies? And Aridis ready to take the corner. Kanua missed. Bicycle back. And McNally almost poked through, and uh, there could be a call about that. Theo Drennan is going to get a yellow card. An absolutely silly yellow card as well. He just slapped the ball out of McNally's hands. And I know he's complaining about it, but that's that, that's just uh, – I, I don't think he kind of expected to hit the ball there. He's kind of just like given a <laughs> – <laughs> My goodness. I, I, love, I love the what? Come on at the end of that. <laughs> I mean, that one's an obvious. He knocked it out of the goalie's hands, so a yellow card. Um, I can't even be mad, though, because of the reaction. <laughs> that was a good attempt, though, from Kinua to try and just flick it backwards into the box and see what happens, and Drennan almost had a shot at it. Yeah, it did seem more of a prayer than it felt like a real pass and it inevitably ended up being a real pass you know as we watched the first half it really seemed like William and Mary pressed high in the first 15 minutes or so of that half and then things leveled off to where Virginia Tech started possessing a bunch again and creating more chances Connor Pugh Pugh dribbles out to the right Hokies want a call they will get it Huge penalty kick coming up for Virginia Tech. Well, that's a huge substitution from Coach Briz and Connor Pugh making the most of his opportunity. Great run. Look at him just kind of stay on that center back shoulder. Definitely a penalty kick. And what a through ball there. Was that Kenua who laid it through to him? Looked like it was. And Connor Pugh is excited coming into the game. Making a big effort there. Now, it looks like it will be Pew to take this penalty. He's holding on to it, and it would be huge for Pew to get back into the goal-scoring realm again. You know, we saw him with such a good 2021 season. Six goals and two assists last season. Not what he might have wanted, and he might have just been holding it up for another player, too to make sure nobody messed with the ball before they were able to kick it. Well, will it be back to Pew? This has been a long conversation for Virginia Tech as to who will take this. Meanwhile, could be McNally's time to shine here. Will it be Pew? Scored a goal against High Point. It's the last time playing here at Thompson Field, can he equalize? Get Virginia Tech on the board. Just 24 minutes flat left in the second half. Come on. Let's go. 
Pugh equalizes. A confident PK taken from the upperclassmen. And now we are all tied up at one apiece. The confidence epitomized upper corner. No mistake. That's what you want from a senior leader. Oh, that's a beauty right there. Now well, McNally, even if he picked the right way, could not have done anything about that. Top shelf for Pew. <laughs> and a Hokies team that was so flat to start out most of this game, finally with some energy and plenty of time to try to find a game winner here. And you could hear McNally yelling before that one was taken. And I think Pew giving a little bit back after that goal. What intensity he brought off the bench, that darting run through. And that's what you want to see out of guys coming off the bench. Bring that level, make a play. And now the Hokies back into it. Second goal of the year for the forward from Ireland. And how about Pew coming into the game and almost instantly making a difference? It did not take long at all. And there were a few chances for him in the Pittsburgh game that he actually let go to waste. 1v1 opportunities with the goalie. One of them, he took the shot from too far out and didn't dribble at the goalie. This time, he learns from it. He comes back the next game and says, hey, I'm going to take the goalie on instead of trying to goal for goal immediately. The right decision to go 1v1 with McNally there. And then he cashes in on the PK himself. I love it. And Pew... In that season, we saw him score so many goals and really jump off the stat sheet for us. You could just tell he was playing with confidence. Playing in that forward position, you get a goal or two, and then more and more just start coming. So hopefully this is a, a great reset for him the rest of the way after that goal against High Point and now the one in this game with not many minutes played in this game either. Right. Krajna. There's Knapp. The Tribe doing a nice job of possessing the ball after the goal, trying to kind of take the sting out of that goal they've just let in and generate something themselves. Krajna setting up. He wants to serve this ball in. Knocked away by Howard. Called us great effort to try and get to it. Looking for him on that service in. Rutenberg. Boy, that was a good looking effort from long range as well. Wide right though. Uh, meanwhile, for Mike Brizendine, he has really started to jump into the bench here and make a few substitutions. Yoshizawa goes to the bench, Balak back in. Salem coming in for Raybush. Coach Briz not afraid to pull some levers to make something happen for this Virginia Tech team. And the, the depth really shows itself well. They've got a lot of different guys who can score the ball and just play in every position on the field. Oh, Chip forward. Hensley wide open. Balak. Uimana had an effort. Now the Hokies reset. Another left footer, and it will be a corner kick. Balak and Virginia Tech. All of a sudden, we've talked about that intensity, Josh, starting to flip the way to the young man in orange now. Well, you get that momentum after the goal. Balak, what a great decision to lay that off to Uimana. That's what you want to do, and Uimana was trying to put that to the back post. He did not intentionally put it right there at the goalie's feet. Good save from McNally. Uimana would... He'll look back on film and say, man, I should have just put that back post, and it's a goal. Another corner for Tech. Long lofted ball. Pew. And the flag came up anyway. Great effort by Drennan getting up and 
making a leap to flick that backwards in the direction of Pew and Hackenberg. And Virginia Tech trying to ride that momentum. Grant Howard called us now. So it is 1-1, a goal apiece. Morrison for William & Mary in the first half, and then Connor Pugh with his second goal of the year, first on a penalty kick here in 2023 to tie it up at 1-1. Just under 20 minutes to decide a winner. About a four-hour drive from Williamsburg to Blacksburg. Trying to do it with all smiles on the way back here on a Tuesday night for the Tribe. Can they find a game winner? Chris Norris coaching the side against his friend Mike Brizendine. Good pass. Morrison. Oh, that was almost the game winner potentially. Trying to go up here with Morrison's second goal of the night. Well, just as you're talking about these two teams trying to get that goal to get the win, what a service in there. That's a perfect ball right past the defense. And Morris, Morrison, that he's just stretching on that. It's just a little bit too far in front of him. I know it looks like it should be an easy tap-in, but that's one he had to stretch full out to even get a foot to it. And, man, close call there from William & Mary. Dylan Middlebrook comes in, buzz a long go. Goes out for William & Mary. It is now Chris Norris peers into his substitutes as well. Willie Cardona right back on. Uimana finally getting himself a break. Gotta wonder, does Uimana come back on again? Laffey. Here comes Nick Laffey. Good pass out to the right. Laffey. Balak running through. Laffey had a lot of options there. Balak was overlapping on his right. He had a chance to shoot. Actually, on the left-hand side, too, there was another player from Virginia Tech running in. He had a, a more than just that option. I uh, wonder if Laffey might have been able to have that one himself. Stopping. Resetting down low. Krajna. And it rolls out for a goal kick. I tell you what, this William and Mary team is not going away, not in the slightest. They are attacking just as much as Virginia Tech now. I kind of expected after the goal, maybe Virginia Tech goes back into the pos possession themselves and William and Mary doesn't get a ton of touches to it. But they've kept up that pressure on the wingbacks for Virginia Tech and not really allowed them to get out very easily. Now, all of a sudden, this game just feels like they are trading haymakers instead of keeping the ball at the midfield. Both teams developing pretty... Solid-looking efforts in the attacking third. Very open. Well, call us to see if he can win this battle against Theo Drennan. Track meet down the sideline, and that could be a card. And that's Drennan's second. Wow. So Theo Drennan, two yellows, two a red. So Virginia Tech is down to 10 men with 16 and a half minutes to go. Well, now you know Drennan really kicking himself for that first yellow card that he didn't need to take when he slapped the ball out of the goalkeeper's hands. Uh, there's a question, too, about the second one, if it's a yellow. I mean, they're both fighting back and forth, pulling each other. Just kind of a, a hand fight in there. and. Uh, a tough, tough night for Theo Drennan after he won some good headers in the box on the attacking end and defensive end. And again, another one of these young players who really, this is his first year of full-time playing. Last year he didn't play. Right. Well done, Bruno. Yep. Stay, stay here, stay here, stay here now. Obviously well frustrated <laughs> as he comes off the field. And, and I would be as well in his position. And, and the shirt pull, the shirt pull. I, I know they're pulling back and forth, but if you've got a shirt pull there, 
stopping a promising attack and pulling on a guy's shirt. It's a yellow card every time. Almost in for Caldas. So Virginia Tech down to 10 men. See what the Hokies can create here. Now, if you're Virginia Tech, only down to 10 men, how does that, and obviously it's got to change your strategy somewhat for Virginia Tech, but do you still try to play aggressively to try to get this win, or are you still going to maybe be okay with a 1-1 draw at this point? Yes, they're certainly going to play for the win, and in fact, right now it looks like all they did, Drennan comes off, Grant Howard and Fenerides are going to stay closer together and play as two center backs instead of the three that they had before. What a cross. Adams right there. Rolled out for Kinua. As of now, the midfield and forward line is the exact same. The only thing that changed, instead of three in the back, you're down to two center backs, and then your, your wing backs are going to keep bombing forward as they have. That was Laffey. Laffey just making his third ever appearance for Virginia Tech. What a story it would be if the freshman's able to score. Here comes Laffey now. Kinua. Balak, freshman himself. Remember, the Hokies are a man down. Space opening up for William and Mary. A long pass. Called us. Leading goal scorer for William and Mary. Oh, what a move by Kenua. What a work rate from Kenua to get to that one. Incredible play to first get to it and then drive past the defense. The pass didn't quite come off for him. Yeah, Connor Pugh trying desperately to stay on side there. And look at him go all the way back on defense now. Not a mile of territory covered by Connor Pugh there. Down to 10 kick. men, and you get that kind of effort out of one of your forwards. You love to see it if you're Coach Briz. Vesterholm and Uimana coming back on. Laffey taken out. Ethan Hackenberg out as well. So now I think we do get probably a formational change with that as Laffey goes off, Vesterholm comes on for him. Declan yeah, I, Quill's also ready to come in. I, I think one of the forwards in this situation goes off. So they had two up top, now just one. Yeah, so more of a 4-5-1 here. And I say 4-5-1, it's going to be a 4-4-1 because they're down to me. Right. So Theo Drennan, two yellow cards. Taken out now with Virginia Tech just down to 10 men. Declan Quill, who will he check in for? And it's Kenua. Kenua looked gassed at the end of the first half for me. I mean, he was running so hard, getting some fresh legs now, and Quill will check into that center midfield area. Well, William and Mary. Chris Norris has said this team has struggled to find a way to finalize games late. What a win this could be if they pick up a goal here in the final 12 and a half minutes. Or will it be Virginia Tech doing so down to one or down to 10 men? Well, remember the Tribe were up 1-0 and William and Mary has given up late leads. It's been an unfortunate trend for William and Mary this year. It's Connor Pugh got the ball away. Needs some help desperately. Balak off target. That ball from Pugh needs to be to Balak's feet or in front of him, too far behind. The idea was right. And again, Pugh's work rate has been one of the contributing factors to getting the goal. And he's been relentless up there. And <laughs> it almost led right to one of those late goals that we were just talking about. It's happened so many times this year for William & Mary.
And if you're William and Mary, you can't be complacent now that you're a man up. That's the type of thing that does lend itself to giving away a late goal when you think, okay, this should be easy the rest of the way. And Mary's offside there. Hokies hurry up. So look at those. Lost a lead late to Delaware. High point, Hofstra and Drexel. Ended up being a draw on the most recent one with Drexel. There's a cross. Boy, that was close. Great service in from Balak. Balak's driven shots and crosses. He put some serious power on the ball. We were talking before the game about a player I used to play with, and we just told him, hey, kick ball hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's Ethan Ballack to a T. Hey, man, just, just kick it real hard. I mean, he can blast the ball from shots outside the box, and that cross was no different. Now, we saw William and Mary in warm-ups absolutely crank the ball at Cole McNally. So at least he's prepared for it. Right. <laughs> and he has, I mean, he has been. Virginia Tech has only scored on a penalty, but can it be William and Mary here? Flag finally came up. Wind out of the sails for Raybush and company. Under 10 minutes left. Hokies down to 10 men. Throw in. And this is the type of situation Marcus Marcos Esco subbing on, the exact thing that he is built for. He can you can play direct to him even though you're a man down. He's the type of player who can hold the ball up in between two guys or get a header on the ball in the box. I oh, mean, I'm ready for some Esco magic here, Bailey. Oh, Tech certainly would love a spark of it. Instead, another foul. No one going into the books. It'll be a free kick. This is a big set piece for William and Mary. Good drive there from Daniel Salem. Running through the Virginia Tech midfielders and a graceful little backward somersault there. Well, Cardona. Not carded, Uimana. Looks like he is subbed out. And Kanua, oh, he got about a five minute break, if that, and is back in. Well, the Hokies having to be creative here. How they want to solve the problem of being a man down. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who's going into what spot right now. Looks like Quill at Right mid now. He was at center mid, started the game at forward. Declan Quill finding himself all over the field today. Well, there's Esco. Dyed hair and all. It's been the trend in the Premier League and international play for so long, right? The, the blonde dyed hair. Yeah, I saw it in that David Beckham documentary. <laughs> David Beckham shaved his head. I wish when I did that it was as culturally significant of a moment. <laughs> I, you know, you've got a TikTok as well. I think <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think you'll blow up sooner okay, rather we'll than see, later. we'll see, man. You're not going to hit Ethan Ballard. No, numbers, not though. at all. It's going to take a lot. <laughs> what a ball. Morrison. Corner kick coming up. It's a save from Timmy Adams. Aiden Morrison, he has been so close to what could be considered a game winner. That's a crafty shot as well. He put it front post. That's a perfect shot. Adams kind of got his left foot out there and, and spread it wide to keep that one away. Morrison, you think most guys are going to go back post for that one and instead tried to sneak it front. Huge save from Timmy Adams. Taken low. That was Bronco. Virginia Tech with space. Esco. Clear to midfield. And once again, just 
Seems that the Hokies are about a pass away from taking the lead. Great run from Esco and the, the driven ball through. I love the attempt, but just wasn't going to get through all those white shirts. Krasna now. Service towards the six. Called us. Six and a half minutes left. Howard now able to pick it back up for Virginia Tech. Bronco. Here comes Declan Quill with a little bit of real estate. Shizawa. Got it back. Hokies with space. It's a fantastic intervention from Joe Cork because Vesterholm snuck in uh, that far, far run on the far side of the field and Core with a beautiful foot up to get to it. Yoshizawa though, won't get the foul. Mazzalongo, pass almost intercepted and instead here comes Ray Bush. What a Vesterholm. tackle. Vesterholm, what a tackle. Decleating the attack of William and Mary. That's textbook from Vesterholm. That is stopping a promising counterattack as well. It was a 3v3 to goal and Vesterholm a one intervention. Declan Quill. And now a goal kick. So this potentially could have saved a score as Vesterholm came in. Wow. Yeah, you saw Morrison there on the far side of the field with a defender in front of him, but a lot of space if he gets the ball to feet and and Vesterholm, big play there. And now another spark here. Connor Pugh, can he provide another for the Hokies at the end? I like this lineup right now for Virginia Tech. You've got Kenyua back in, Yoshizawa on one wing, Quill on the other. And now Pugh going to be pressing that back line, seeing if they can start a counterattack. Pugh's got the lone goal for Tech on the penalty kick. And pass out wide for Quill. Can you and now? Vesterholm dribbles into the box. Going to have a chance here. Cardona slides to keep the ball alive. And back for Luke Core. Great possession from the Hokies, down a man, and yet keeping it in the attacking third. Carter Hensley with a collision. There's a foul in Virginia Tech. Well, a bit frustrated with the timing of that whistle. Ian Krajna down. What do you think, Josh? Oh gosh, high foot there from Hensley. At first I thought it was just the shoulder going in, but oh, studs right on the ankle. I, Hensley's really lucky to get away with just the free kick given away on that one. And that one, that one's gonna hurt. Sorry, sorry about that one, Krajina. Yeah, a senior from Huntsville, Virginia. 11 games of the year starting everyone really Starting to settle in as a starter for this William & Mary team after being a reserve, Carter Hensley. And Krajna gives you that bombing outside back that you love to see, gets on the stat sheet often. A good job stepping in there. And good to see him back up after that one. That's one of those you get stepped on the ankle. You, you never know what could happen. And back out there, looks like he's running fine. Oh, there he is now, Krajna with three minutes left. William and Mary locked into another tight game, so is Virginia Tech. Oh, what a ball, Aiden Morrison. Yeah. 
Benaridis. Krasna again, he's had a knack for creating some crosses in the box now. And he'd do it with two and a half minutes to play. Great defensive work from Yoshizawa. Again, that's something we mentioned in the first half. His defensive work has gotten so much better this year. That time tracking all the way back and making the play to win the throw for his team. Oh, Andy Sullins back in. Interesting to see. We haven't seen Oliver Roche who has led Virginia Tech in scoring with three goals. Hokies have gone into the bench many a time here in the second half, especially after Theo Drennan was taken out. And Roche has been a non-factor. Only played 24 minutes to start. It might be a case of just the energy level. Sullins and Pugh are giving you really good energy off of the bench. And want to keep them involved. Sullins is going to give you that willing running behind the defense here. Back in midfield, this could be dangerous. Cardona slides, no call. Carter Hensley. Ball to the middle for Declan Quill. Quill shoved down. Once again, lack of whistle there, frustrating some Hokies. Grant Howard meandering for space and gets some. Hokies may have one or two more good chances in them. Same for William and Mary. That was a long go. Uh, just one minute. Kinua. Comes Kinua. Too long of a touch. Despite the man disadvantage, Virginia Tech has really brought the energy after that red card and attacked and attacked all game long. And they want a stoppage of the clock. They will get it. And a yellow card for Bazalongo. I think this is a situation you want to slow it down, get everybody up, and have one last prayer here with a ton of players in the box. Service has got to be good from the set piece. Bazalongo gets called for the yellow card. Late slide in. Pretty easy call there for the referee. Yoshizawa, what, what a spark off the bench in the first half. And now in the second half, he's had so many opportunities to dribble at the defense. And he's he's just got that factor. You can't describe it. He can just glide by guys with ease. And he also can't coach it a lot of times. Sometimes it's just that willingness, that confidence to take players on. Well, last great chance for Virginia Tech coming up here. 33 seconds left. Here comes Carter Hensley. And before that even could start, it is a free kick for William and Mary. So now for the Tribe, McNally's way outside of the goal with the clock ticking down to 22 seconds. Virginia Tech seems rather reserved in the fact that this is going to end in a draw. William and Mary has other plans here. Called us. Will not get the chance. Four seconds. Tribe need a miracle shot. Will not get it. That will end this one. Frustrating start for Virginia Tech, and it ends with a draw after the penalty kick from Connor Pugh. And I think if you look